This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. I was trying to get an idea. I want them dead presidents. I want to pull up. Head spin. Get it, get flat. I got six jobs. I don't get it. And we are still, still not tired on episode number 32 of Two Bad Hombres. I am your host, Vito Jerome Cherko, alongside my usual psychic and partner in crime, that is the Doc from Doc and Jock, John Charles the Macko Rune. John, how's it going? Vito, welcome to the weekend. Always enjoy our conversations. I just want to state on this podcast, I'm very proud of you. When you set a goal last year to raise $1,000 for Make-A-Wish, I thought, oh, it's a pretty lofty goal there. I didn't think you would achieve it. Then we said, you know what? After you raised $1,100 last year, you came this year and said, you know what? I'm going to raise the goal to $2,000 this year. And I said, ooh, that's a lofty goal too. But in the end, I'm proud of you. You met the goal. You helped out Make-A-Wish. And for your charitable heart, it's very kind that you get people together and that you organize, create, and run the Churko and Company softball game for charity for Make-A-Wish Michigan. It turned out great. I can't wait to recap it with you. And uh, I just want to state from everyone here at the network, we're very proud of you. It turned out great. And, uh, you know, when people are charitable, it's very nice because we've been lucky enough to do this podcast. You're an up-and-coming journalist. And for you to think about giving back to others, is a great thing and something that always should be commended, and we're all proud of you here. $2,000 plus raised for Make-A-Wish Michigan, and great job, sir. $2,070 raised in total via online and at-the-game donations. Great crowd of people, of supporters, and donations continue to trickle in after the game concluded on Saturday. In lovely Dearborn, Michigan, right off of Michigan Ave, at the Dearborn Ford Community and Performing Arts Center, and what a good day for softball. Charity softball game, the second annual one for charity and for Make-A-Wish Michigan specifically. And the outpouring of support from you, Doc, has to be commended too, first and foremost, for all the money that you donated via online, the online page for my charity softball game, $200 plus from the DOC. And not a guy Give that, me the credit of that. I don't want, I don't want, $250. You want to, you want to $50. Well, we're going to just do it to you. <laughs> no but it cleared up $250 in total from the doc. The highest donor, I believe, as of right now, probably will end up being that for this year's charity softball game. I think he wants to smirk a little bit and smile. And I think he deserves to smile there because that's a big donation, a hell of a donation that helped me get to $1,000 online going into the game on Saturday. So I was already halfway there to $2,000, and I exceeded the 2K threshold. So I was so happy about that, and it was a great, great day, great experience for me, and I look forward to doing it again once again next summer. No doubt about it, Vito. Special place in my heart for kids, for issues related to mental health. And so if I can help make a wish or help you out in any way that I can, then I will do it. And so everybody that bought tickets through DetroitSportsPodcast.com, my personal donation, it all helped out, and your cause is great, and it, it worked out. I love the field. When you showed a picture beforehand, I was like, what a nice field, a good choice, and it seemed like everybody had a good time, and from the valiant periscopes that were shown, <laughs> it seemed like it was a, a very fun time. Tell me about it. It was fun. I was uh, the coach. I was a manager of my team, and I played an inning. And I played at first base, by the way. So this little guy, under five feet tall, played first base. Guess what? In Major League Baseball and just softball and baseball overall, no matter what level you play at, uh, a guy of my stature is not playing at first base. But guess what? I can feel that position pretty adequately for a little person, trust me, and much better than other people around my size, or even probably at 5'1", 5'2", 5'3", 5'4", 5'5". So... I am that confident in my ability, and I think I performed all right fielding. Didn't have to bat, which I don't like batting, which is surprising to probably many because people like batting more than fielding typically and think fielding's tough and hitting, you know, and softball isn't that hard, especially, well, when you consider it slow pitch softball, uh, as it has been for my charity softball game, and that's what I play in my co-ed league too. But for me, I am more defensively adequate or able to perform than hitting the ball consistently in softball, even in baseball. I've always loved fielding. Got to get that glove work action in, and I do in the middle infield. I have 
throughout my life playing second and shortstop, including for my co-ed softball team, whose season ended uh, this past week. We lost in the playoffs in the first round and double elimination by losing both games. But this conversation is supposed to be right, directly aimed at the charity softball game and question. how well it went. Yeah, so I got a question. We'll get back to that, Doc, here. Now, Vito, I got a question for you. How did the Churko and Company softball game come to fruition? I don't recall you telling the story. Why did you decide to do a charity softball game a couple of years back and give money to Make-A-Wish? Where did that come from? Well, the first year I did it just for fun at the former site of Tiger Stadium. I think I was already podcasting with you. I believe that was my first year doing the podcast in 2015. It was then. Because last year was the first year in which I designated the game towards charity and towards Make-A-Wish Michigan specifically, which... Now, that idea came to mind for, you know, uh, raising money for Make-A-Wish Michigan because of the fact that I've known people that have raised money for Make-A-Wish Michigan in the past, and I kind of knew what they already did. Now I've read more into it, know more about it, and it's a great foundation. I mean, think about it, what it does, Make-A-Wish, um, as a nonprofit, obviously, in raising money to grant the wishes of kids who have illnesses, and it makes their day, makes their year, maybe makes their life. And makes them just that much happier. And it's uh, for a great cause. I love doing it for Make-A-Wish Michigan. And my aim is to keep doing it for Make-A-Wish Michigan. And to raise even more than what I raised this year, next year, which I think is achievable. So right now what I'm aiming for specifically is $2,500 next year. And I don't think that's too lofty of a goal to meet. I don't think that's too lofty at all, especially with where you're going to shake out. So Make-A-Wish is something that's dear to your heart because others have donated as well. What does the money go to when you make a charitable donation? Where's my two fifty going, Vito? Better not be going to your pocket. Right to me in my pocket to pay off my uh, loan debt from college. Uh, thank you, Doc, for that donation. Uh, no, but really, all these generous donations are going towards a kid, an individual kid who I haven't picked out. Because I, I believe, from my knowledge, you can have a kid that you know already that is suffering from a terminal illness or just a, a chronic illness, whatever it may be. I know it's in their language online what it has to be, what kind of an illness. But... Yeah, you can know the kid already going into it and pick out the kid that you want to raise the money for to grant the wish of, or it can be just a random child that will receive the gift and, you know, through all these donations eventually. And like, I'll find out about that a few months down the line once they collect all my money and see how much, well, it's equated to and what it can cover. Then I'll find out what it exactly goes towards and what kid it does affect in a positive manner. That's awesome, Vito. It's nice to see that you can contribute to society, not just take from the podcast. You do decide <laughs> to give back, so that's a good thing, and that's why we support it, and we'll always support you no matter what. Even if you decide to go on to a bigger network or you decide to leave us, we'll always support you and the Churko and Company softball game. I think next year, because of the fact that it, you know I'll have more time, I'll have more of an established practice. Next year, I probably will start off by making an appearance at the game. Good guy. I was about to say, I, mean, I know you love donating money, and I got to commend you once again for that. Biggest donor once again. But I want to see you at the game. I want to see you field. I want to see you suit okay. up in field. No doubt next about year. it. Now, a video surfaced regarding what happened after the game, and it was disappointing to see that as a manager, you were the losing manager, and you lost not only to just somebody that just was a random person that showed up to the game and donated. No, no, no. You lost to your brother, and you had a big smile on your face. You were laughing did, it up, I know. and you were handshaking. Like <laughs> I was looking at Vito. I go, man, that guy looks like a loser. And I said, you know why? If I was the losing manager, my head would be down. You'd see the bill of my cap over my head. I'd be like, Here's the winning manager, Dom. He did a good job. We just didn't cut it today. You're all yucking it up, having a good time. And uh, I know it's your brother, but you seemed a little too happy when you lost the game. What happened? Why'd you guys well, lose? come on. It's for charity, man. It's for fun. And trust me, I've lost twice now, two times in a row to Dominic, head to head as managers. So hard to take a little bit, but then you get over it because you know how much money that I raised in that given day, how many people had a good time. And it was about making it fun for everybody around me, right? Making sure that everybody has a good time. It looks like, or it looked like that everybody did. And that's what makes me happy. That's why I'm all giddy after the game, after I lost. And to lose to my brother, I would love to lose to him. Out of anybody that I could lose to, I would love to lose to Dom. And nobody else, so just to Dom. How did you guys pick the teams? So I gave Dominic, our co-ed softball team, I gave him everybody on that team against everybody that I got to come to the game after that. And guess what? One of the people who showed up, Milton McCrory, 
I don't, you didn't even know this, did you? Milton McCrory played in the game. No, nice. He did at third base. You missed out. And you come to the game next year. Maybe we'll get some more sort of labs there, or like notable people, notable athletes, or former athletes. Did you formally invite him? That's cool. He was formerly, uh, formally invited. And he came out, played third base for my squad. And uh, Peter Vanderkate came out as well. Now, you remember him? Olympian swimmer came out as well. So we had two notables that we've interviewed on this podcast come out, support me, and play in the game too. Now, the reason why I didn't know that oh, here was something go. I chided you for was I was obviously, I think you could tell by all the messages I was sending you, looking for some and I didn't information. for how long. That was, so, that was so horrible. My phone got some water damage from the game at the game, but we can talk about that maybe later too. Yeah, definitely. We're going to talk about it. You're still Team Samsung, and I'm very disappointed. Yes. And I'm going to make my case why you made a huge mistake when you messed up your phone. But at the same time, you got to realize this is a social media age. So I'm a guy, obviously... I made a nice donation, a healthy donation, because of the fact I couldn't be there. Because Saturday is my busiest day. It wasn't like I was loafing around. In the practice, I have clients basically from 9 a.m. up until 7 p.m. And I just can't move people all that way around because otherwise I'm going to move them into Sunday. So I just can't really move those those appointments. Saturday is my busiest day. So I said to myself, okay, good. Vito's going to be there. He'll take some pictures. I'll get a chance to maybe see if anybody shows up that you invited. Maybe because I know you were going to invite Andre Drummond, Kate Upton. <laughs> I know you were trying to invite, you know, Amy Andrews and things One like that. One of the that. best of the best. Yes. Yeah, only the best of the best. And I was like, okay, good. Maybe someone will show up and Vito will take pictures. Nothing. Dead silence. Okay, 3 o'clock hits, 4 o'clock. Like, okay, they're getting, getting the first couple innings. And I remember you said <laughs> that you were just managing, so you're just standing there. Well, I'm so, around talking to people, too, man. I'm not just on my phone. And it actually, one minute I'll say this. to snap a photo. I'm going to throw somebody under the bus a little bit here. A guy from Valiant was going to be there earlier to take some of that stuff. You know those videos that were on Valiant's Twitter page? Well, he wasn't there from the start or as early as he was planning on the end there. So he was going to kind of take care of those responsibilities, Fine, by the way, too. So I'm sitting here in between visits because I got 15 minutes in between appointments, nothing. So I text you, hey, any photos? Did the game happen? How much money? See, I wasn't even buying my phone at that point, though. Exactly. So, fine. Saturday happens. I go into Sunday. Wake up a little bit. <laughs> then I'm, like, stalking you via Facebook, and I'm, like, I'm hitting Vito Jerome and finding you on Facebook, and I'm looking, I'm like, there's no pictures. The last thing that I posted was the, the podcast announcement for Two Bad Hombres. And I'm yep. looking, I'm looking, I'm like, there's no pictures. Did this dude even, did this game happen? Did Vito? It was fake. I just collected all the money for myself, man. <laughs> so I'm waiting for, for more important for me, I want to know the tally because I like the fact that you set a goal and I wanted to see you formally thank everybody, probably the biggest donor, maybe thank you to the, the, the people that donated the money. It didn't happen. I'm like, okay, now it goes into Monday. I'm like, dude, this game was like, 48 hours ago, by now, you had to at least post one photo. Now, I do get and there And there was a photo posted on Valiant's Twitter page on Monday, by the way. So 48 hours after the fact. 48 hours after the fact. Yeah. So next year, I'm going to go out there and I'll take... Uh, by, by If I was there, I would have had a thousand photos of you, anybody, Peter, That's Milton. your job, then. That's your job. Yes, you got to show I, up. That's your job next I'll year do on the, social media. Yes. We'll hype it up yeah. and let everyone know that, look... It's no small feat. Look, it's people, legit. Yeah, people try to raise money and get fifty bucks, and so for you to raise now three thousand dollars plus in yeah. two years for Make a Wish, basically through social media and through your contacts, is amazing. So this thing can grow, but you got to tell people what happened. You got to tell them the results. You got to give the people what they want, and you didn't do that because I'm the people, and I you didn't are get to the say, direct people. Yeah, I'm the direct people. I wanted to know what was going <laughs> down, and I was disappointed. So next year, I will probably go and take a bunch of pictures, and I will try my best. Probably not to play, because I'll probably hurt a hamstring. You don't want to embarrass myself. yourself, but that's the thing. I, you know I kind of want to see yourself, or you know, see you get embarrassed a little bit. Or I'll be the guy that strikes out. Oh, come on. We'll you can't strike happens. out. You won't strike out, But Dad. you did a great job all Thank in all. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of your efforts. Um, the videos were great. You, you know, shaking hands with Dom, some of the action. Who was the guy in the first video that crushed that, sh- that shot into the outfield? It was pretty good. Yeah, somebody- I would have to look again, but I think maybe a guy who was friends, I don't even know their relationship, but a friend maybe of the photographer who showed up, he yeah. ended up playing. This guy, DeAndre, he had great. a big hit, nice catch in the outfield for my squad once again. Great. And a losing effort once again, two straight years now for my I- squad. Another but- point of contention in your video was... You seem to be a very positive, uplifting manager because there was a, a hit to third base and the throw was way past the first baseman. And you're like, oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all good. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, trying to be too nice. I'm a nice guy anyways, overall wise. And like, it's for charity. It's a nice day. You no, know? you got to have some fun. Make the play. 
throw the ball to first. Catch the ball. So Okay, so when you come next, I want to see you do that. You bark out orders and critiques like that to people when they're just playing for fun. And Let's see other, you do that. And the final highlight of the Valiant Periscope videos was they pan over to Nick, and Nick's like, boo, Vito. Yeah, I know. He had to do it, man. That was great. Yeah. And so everyone seemed like they had a good time, Vito. And so um, for those that don't go, what basically happens besides the softball? People just get together, just uh, talk a little bit. They play the game. And uh, what? Do you serve them drinks? Do you serve them like caviar, beer, anything? Oh, the top notch, you know, uh, top Bring shelf it. liquor. Do you gr- are you out there grilling hot dogs and hamburgers and doing some barbecuing for these people? There are dogs. We give out. We supply the water. Dogs. We have potato chips from Better Made, the headquarters on Gratiot Avenue. So I went over there, got three uh, boxes of 50 bags of chips each. Um, also, we had items to auction off from Valiant, Valiant product, shirts and hats, very nice stuff, obviously, because it's Valiant. Uh, gift cards from Company 512, uh, the store attached to Top Cat Sales, downtown Royal Oak. Yeah, made in Detroit, Mitchell and Ness apparel there, Valiant, Adidas Originals apparel. So 2941 you- Street Food gift cards, which we've nice. mentioned before on here. Salon product, Paul Mitchell, or Paul Mitchell, as I like to say, my buddy oh, Nick likes to say. Nice. So a variety of items to auction off. People just bought some raffle tickets, and for a 50-50 raffle that also went on at the end of the game. So... You had the shirts. We were, you know, front and center when people walked in, you know, through the entrance. We gave out the shirts that they requested. They bought the shirts 10 bucks a pop for a shirt if you weren't playing. Now, if you were playing, you had to pay $25. And then the game started shortly after that, after everybody arrived, about a half an hour after that, to be more precise. So about 3.30 was the start time for the game. And we played until about 5. We did the auction of items and the 50-50 raffle. People got some dogs, got some food, got hydrated with some water, which we were passing out all game long with you know a bunch of bottles of water that we supplied to people. So I think everybody stayed calm, cool, collective, had fun, had a good time. And, uh, you know, you were in the sun, but I think people stayed cool, too, uh, in terms of being, you know, hydrated from the water we had there. And people were able to bring their own alcohol if they wanted. It was BYOB because we were able to bring it to the field, unlike last year. Oh, even though, hell Even though yeah. people still brought it last year, but not legally. This year, legally, it was able to be brought. So how did guest Milton McCrory and Peter Vanderkay perform in the game? Vanderkay had a big shot, man, at the outfield. He's a big dude. Obviously, Milton is, too. Uh, no offense to Milton. Might be a little bit past his prime. I don't know. You can say that. Um, but, but he but had fun. Everybody he had fun. fun. They both had fun. Milton played third base the whole entire game. Uh, Peter Vanderkay, I, I believe, played outfield on my team the whole entire game. I should know that, right? I was a manager. but So in the end, what was the final score? Final score was 14-9, to nine, so my team made a little bit of a comeback in the last half. How many, how many innings? We played nine, too. Nine it's only 14-9 to nine and nine innings of slow-pitch softball. You know, slow pitch softball, you play seven, like in my co-ed league, and you get 20 runs combined. Now, or, you know, 20 maybe scored by each, because we had, obviously, 23 combined runs. But you might get to a game, to a final score in a game where you have 15 and 14 runs each, or 16 and 14, or 17 and 13, or 20 to 10, 20 to 15. So... We didn't get to that high amount of runs scored, but I guess we made some plays too. Just my team didn't make as many plays as Dominic Joseph Churkos did, unfortunately, for my sake. No doubt about it. Good stuff, Vito. Very good recap. I'm hoping that you can continue to do this. It's awesome, and I'm hoping that we can continue to grow the podcast so that you have a bigger platform to continue to raise money, and you're doing a great job, and hopefully, you know, maybe within five years, you can get it up to $10,000, and that'd be amazing, so... Good stuff for you, sir. I'm very proud of you. And like I said, if I can do anything at all to help out, you know, I've been blessed. And so I can definitely donate the money to you and your cause because you've done a lot for the network, more than you know. I don't even think I can thank you enough for all the, the work you do and all the requests that you take from myself. So great oh, stuff, Oh, you can sir. thank me. I know a way in which you can thank me, but you kind of did that already through the charity donation, which was great. And really quick, back in, you know, up to the charity game, Milton McCrory, I just thought of it. Something notable that I should bring up. He's playing third base once again. There was a controversial call at third made by my father. My dad was a home plate ump and made the call from there. And he <laughs> called the guy safe when the ball was there to third and Milton had the guy out via, I believe, a force out at third. My dad didn't call it, being the nice guy that he is, trying to give, I guess, well, the other side, which didn't need the help, the extra out to play with. Then they scored, I believe, after that. Took off, ran away with the game pretty much. But... A little bit of controversy and a, uh, a mix-up there. I get well by my dad, and Milton wasn't happy. I'll just say that Milton did not speak glowingly of my dad on that call made by him, which was not in my team's favor. Oh, nice. Least. Did he uh, swear a little bit? He didn't he? Sw- I don't okay. think he swore, but he yelled. It was loud enough to be heard by everybody <laughs> at that ballpark. Let me say that. Nice. Well, you, hey, 
I like Milton's competitiveness. Yeah. Your dad can't be making bad calls. Right? You got to tell your dad, hey, this is softball. People are competitive. You can't be doing stuff like that. I guess Milton's a fighter in anything he does, right? Any athletic endeavor, but, and he definitely was that. But after the play, Saturday. he calmed down, and everyone shook hands, and it was all good? He was fine. He was pissed, but he got over it. Yeah, okay, eventually. Good. Awesome. Good stuff, sir. And uh, you said next year you're thinking about maybe moving it closer, not King Boring Field? Yeah, probably closer because of the fact that it wasn't close to really anybody, including myself. Mm. Nice ballpark, nice diamond, nice facilities over there by the Dearborn Ford Community and Performing Arts Center. But would like to get a, a closer diamond to most of the players because it wasn't, I guess, it wasn't close enough to everybody, you know? Gotcha. So you probably have to find a location out here on the east side? More on the east side for next year, yeah. That's oh. my plan. Hey, as long as you find a good field and you continue to get the sponsor supports that you have, all will be good. And Doc, just the aim is next year to get more people to show up, maybe even a few of your adult entertainment friends, which we won't name the names of right now, but it's always to make it bigger and better than it already was. Right, Doc? Vito, definitely. As we continue to grow the podcast, with your reach continuing to grow all across this fine state, I have no doubts that we can continue to grow this thing. And like we said last year, let's go big or go home. And uh, you doubled your goal last year. Why not raise your goal to $2,500? I think you can match it. I hope so, and I think we will as well. And let's take a quick commercial break on episode number 32 of Two Bad Hombres. When we come back, I'm going to try my best to get Vito to change something that's very important to all of us. Stay with us on Two Bad Hombres. Vito, I want to tell you about our host site, Podomatic.com. When Adam and I first started this project, we were looking for a place to host all of our recorded audio, and thank goodness we found Podomatic. We've recorded well over six to 700 podcasts, finding new shows to air each and every single week, and we need a place to host it. We need a place where all of our supporters can find our recorded audio, and we use Podomatic for a couple different reasons. One, very easy to upload audio. I mean, Vito, you record and upload audio all the time to Podomatic, and it's so easy. Within minutes, you take your recorded audio, you upload it to Podomatic, and within minutes, you can generate links so that all of our supporters in the United States and overseas can listen to all of our podcasts. If you're looking to start a brand new project, a brand new podcast, and you want to reach the same level of success as the Detroit Sports Podcast Network, all the hosts here would recommend one host site. Podomatic.com. Yeah, we're coming now. Come on. Uh, yeah. That's right. We put it down. It's like a family in here, just a little disabled. Putting it down, we lay them out on the table. Yeah. Who's in the house? The brothers in the house. Gotta turn it on out. But you know what we about. Kinda like Kane and Abel. A big unstable. All right, Vito, I got a bone to pick with you, okay? Earlier in the show, I talked about the fact that you did not post any pictures, and you said, look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry when I texted you on Sunday because finally, after 24 hours, you finally got back to me, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> this guy doesn't even reply to my text. I'm the guy that was the big baller donator. I don't even care, you know what? Forget and, the money now. And you came back to me and said, I'm sorry, I had an issue with my Samsung, so I decided to go out and get another Samsung. And I said to myself, why is this guy who had an issue with his phone going out and get another phone with the similar brand as the one that was messed up? What happened to your previous Samsung? What happened? Well, you know, enjoying the lovely charity softball game, it rained on us. Now, not during the game itself. The game was already over. But by the end of the day, when everybody was receiving the auction items, I was going through the raffle tickets. It started just pouring on us. We got drenched. And guess what else got drenched? Not just the human beings, but my phone, my Samsung S7. Galaxy S7. Now I have the S8, by the way. So I upgraded by my phone receiving water damage on Saturday, last Saturday now. And it affected the port where you put the USB cord in for charging purposes. So my phone no longer could charge effectively. And the battery, you could tell, even when it was in trying to charge, the battery life just seemed like it wasn't there. It wasn't what it used to be. And because of that, I had to move on. But I did upgrade. And now I have a case finally, a protective case on my phone. Probably should have had it before, right? Didn't have it. I was a bozo. They didn't think I needed one. And then I damaged my phone periodically by dropping it. It had cracks on the screen. But now the screen, I don't have to worry about that because it's beautifully protected. So it's in perfect, going to be in perfect condition forever, right? It's, it's bound to be. It has to be, Doc. Okay, Vito. First and foremost, why is it that you did not know to get a case to cover your phone? Did you not know that your phone was not waterproof? I thought some of the Samsungs, the, the Galaxy 7s and 8s were 
waterproof. They are to a certain extent. I guess my phone took uh, took in way too much water last Saturday. <laughs> way too much water. So don't you know that if it starts raining, to put it in your pocket? <laughs> uh, I had it in my cleats, which were out. You know what? See, the thing is, I'm busy roaming around as the MC host of the event. I'm walking around, not even paying attention to my phone or to where it's at, where I had put it. And it was placed in my cleats. And I thought, well enough, well, it's a sunny day. I have no worries whatsoever about the phone being in there. Nobody's going to touch it. It's not going to get damaged. And then it started raining, downpouring. And that's when it happened. Oh, Vito, shame on you. Okay, so you made a mistake and you ruined a smartphone. Yes. So you got to be ruined more careful with your smartphones because of the fact that, hey, these things are expensive. You, that wasn't a, the phone that you had previously. It wasn't cheap, right? It was a couple hundred dollar phone that you bought, right? It was not cheap. It was not cheap whatsoever. Now here, you better retain your man card and say you went back to the store and say that the phone was damaged. Not through anything that you did. Did you go back and get yourself that brand new phone for free? I had to buy it, man. Come on. straight up. I don't lie. Vito! I'm not con- I mean, I'm not conniving. I'm not a liar. I'm not a manipulator. Did you buy any of the insurance on any of the Samsung phones? You know, phones? it's funny. I didn't get insurance on this either. Okay, so I'll tell you why. This might be sad to admit, but I'm not a man that's paying for my own phone yet. Not technically. Now, I just paid the phone bill for my family, but we're on a group bill. I still yeah. live at home, remember? Yeah. And I paid for it, this last payment, and I am going to chip in now more often. And because it's more money, because I got this phone on top of my other phone, it's still on the bill. So my phone that's been damaged that I'm not going to use whatsoever the rest of the way now until it dies out, it's still on the bill for us to pay. So for my dad and or I, so now I've got to chip in more money, and I'm willing to, and I might just... I might just as well cover the whole entire bill from here on out to be nice because I feel like I should. I think I owe that to my dad because I made the mistake of leaving my phone out there on Saturday and it getting water damaged. So I think I have to step up to the plate now, right, and do something about it and probably make the payments on a monthly basis, right, for him and for the rest of my family then too because we're on that group plan once again through Sprint. Vito, I'm utterly devastated that you didn't go up to the store and say, hey, I was working hard typing up an article on the phone. I was doing something and stopped working. Unbelievable that you would unbelievably not honest try. on my part though, right? Yeah, unbelievably Give me honest. that much. Nah. I'm a good guy. Okay. I do charity events. Do how you guys that, that phone... host charity events lie, lie doc? Do they ever lie? <laughs> how much did that phone cost? <laughs> how much did that new Samsung phone cost? Oh, uh, I, I kind of forget. Um, but I'll just say that. It was a lot of money. A lot of money. Oh, it wasn't that because well, it's like worth that, right? But I didn't have to pay that up front. I had to pay. It's like $35 more monthly now because of this new phone that I have. So, so oh, you're doing the plan where... It, it's you, part of a plan. So, okay. so you're only... You didn't 30, have to pay for the phone flat out. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so that's not so bad. So mistake number one was messing up your phone. Mistake two was not trying to get, a, get another phone for free. Mistake three was, why do you like Samsung? I'm an <laughs> iPhone guy, and many people, and my best friend included, are Samsung people, and I've never had a Samsung. I don't really like the layout. Here's the re- one of the reasons why I'm going to advocate for you to have an iPhone. It's so user-friendly. You can connect it to a computer, and it runs everything. I mean, the Mac and the iPhone go hand in hand. You basically now, Vito, can take your iPhone, sync it with your Mac, so that anything you do on your iPhone shows up on your computer. It's made my life so easy. I could even, uh, I could even admit this to all our listeners. My wife was so against me getting this Mac and I told her the price. I'm like, honey, it's like $1,400. I know that it's kind of a big expense. And I know that we're supposed to talk about it. She was like, no, you can't have it. And I said, okay. And I went out and bought it five minutes later. And so the reason why is I knew that, okay, I've gotten familiar with the iPhone. I understand that Apple kind of has products that you can uh, that are user-friendly that you could sync up with it. And so I sync this, this brand new iPhone 7 with this Mac Everything's perfect. So when I send you an email, I can send it from this phone or this Mac, and it's the same thing. And the ease in which you can FaceTime people, I mean, let alone the fact that my nephew's devastated, that he can't, uh, every time I go over there, he's like, can I I FaceTime Vito? And I got to go, no, Vito doesn't have an iPhone anymore. He's like, why? Apple products, I think, are so user-friendly that you could give it to a 65-year-old woman, and within 48 hours, she could get around and push all the buttons. It's so user-friendly, you could sync it with a Mac, and just the ease in which you can use an iPhone, I think makes it the best phone out there. I probably would be lost without my iPhone. I had an iPhone before, remember, though. We did the... You had... Remember, we used to do the phone calls with your nephew, and video chats, and everything, FaceTime, and that was really cool. Well, 
I damaged that phone too and had to resort to the Samsung, I think. I think that's how it happened because I loved my iPhone. I loved it, all the accessibility, all the apps on there, easiness with it. I think you could really train somebody in a short amount of time to be able to use the iPhone. I think you're right, especially with the new technology on these iPhones coming out. But I think with the Samsung too, and you have a bigger screen, you have all the apps still. I can still contact everybody that I want. You know, all my uh, contacts are backed up. So for me, I don't think I'm losing out that much without having the iPhone as I used to. You like your phone? Tell me about what phone you got. The Samsung Galaxy S8. So I had the S7, now I have the S8. Had to make the upgrade because, well, had to resort to it. Really, my, you know, my hands were tied. My hand was forced to do it. But I've benefited. I mean, it's a nice phone. I think it's a sleeker product, sleeker screen, bigger screen by a tad at least. And now I have the nice cover for it, man. I upgraded with the protective case, protective cover for the screen. I've got the works now, baby. That's all I can say. So tell me about some of the amenities, some of the nice things you can do with that phone. Now, Vito, I obviously love my iPhone. I've had each brand since iPhone number four. So this is my third version of the iPhone. And the quality of the apps is great. The quality of the videos, the quality of the camera is unbelievable. So you love to shoot video. I just hope it's the proper and appropriate videos that you're shooting on your phone. Of course. All the time. Only appropriateness from the doc. But... I like my phone. You like your phone. That's all there is to it, I think. Because I liked the iPhone. Like, I would consider going back to the iPhone if the right offer was there. But right now, because we're on this plan with my family and whatnot, it just works out where the Samsung S, you know, Galaxy S8. Oh, so Dom has a Samsung too? He does now. Yeah, we had iPhones. My mom and dad still have iPhones. And they work out perfectly for my mom and dad. So the amenities, I don't know if there's a big difference. I don't know if there is, Doc, that I can say, oh, this is a clear-cut better phone with all the different and better amenities that it offers than the iPhone does. I don't know if there's that big of a difference. So I'm not going to lie to you here and say, oh, all day long, the Samsung is the phone you have to go get. All right, check the poll. Earlier in the week, you ran a poll via our Twitter platform, at Detroit Podcast. Early results, what do the people have? All right, so far, Doc, we have the iPhone leading Samsung, 71% to 29%. So you are winning out in a big-time manner. I believe so, Vito, because of the fact that whenever you go out, just kind of peek now in the next couple of weeks. Just kind of peek out and see what people have. I think that the majority of people have iPhones because of the fact that you can FaceTime, because of the fact that you can sync it with your computer. Yep. It's got so many great qualities. The, the And now I do think that Samsung has done some things a little bit better in terms of, you know, being waterproof first, the advancement in the camera, kind of some of the screen technology has been a little bit more advanced. But at the same time, I'm always of the opinion that Apple is always going to work to improve each iPhone. So if you can get a phone every two or three years, I would stick with the iPhone because of the fact that it's so easy. It's so, and the majority of people have it. So if you want to FaceTime, and I can't describe to you how sad I was the first time I sent you a text and you're a green person. Come on now. I'm a green Martian now. You're no longer Martian, in the blue. No longer a blue guy, and it's just not cool anymore. So I need you to get back to the iPhone so we can get back to FaceTiming. My nephew can be happy, and we can continue to communicate in the best way possible. You used to communicate with me more when you had the iPhone. I know. I could get a Since hold of then, you. Since then, I've become a different person. I think your Samsung phone sucks. To be I, I live a different life. I live the Samsung life. Okay, so this phone you're going to take care of and not mess up because you are paying the extra 34 bucks I more. better now because if I don't you know, take proper care of this phone, I'm going to be in Poops Creek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, up an alley, big time. So, um, And you know what I was going to say? I think the iPhone, what it offers in terms of what the benefits are compared to the Samsung, wouldn't you say the iPhone, and I think it's been declared that it's safer overall-wise, isn't it? It's uh, less susceptible, isn't it? to hacks, to people hacking into it, than a Samsung is. I think that's been proven with the iPhone. Also, you have more apps, right, through the iPhone. Isn't that the difference, too, between the iPhone and I've never the used, Samsung? I've never used it, no doubt about it. I've never, I've never used a Samsung, so I don't know how it works. I don't want to know because I love my... I, listen, I got the brand new Plus. First of all, if you want to compare iPhone 7 to iPhone 7 Plus, I'm hooked. I can never go back to a regular phone again. There's a big difference. Oh my gosh, yeah. This phone is like a tablet. It's great. You take high quality videos. You can see all the videos in bigger screens, high quality. It was amazing. And I'm like, oh my goodness. It feels heavier. It feels like a real phone. So I'm not going to get another phone probably till iPhone 9 or 10. I love this iPhone 7. It's great. The iPhone 7 Plus with the bigger screen and everything. Now, the tough part with all the phones is I did already crack this. But yes, just that can at, happen. Just at the top. So everyone's always said to me now in five years, you have never got a case. What's the big deal? And I never dropped my phone. This year, in the summer of 17, sitting down around bonfires, I dropped my primary phone and I dropped the podcast phone. And I'm like, come on. 
within uh, within three weeks, I dropped two phones. But <laughs> so you had a good run for a while. There, but Jack. there was a common thing. It was a pair of shorts that had loose pockets. I hate that. Yeah. I've had that happen to me, man. With my wallet falling out, by the way, at establishments, at restaurants, I've had my wallet fall out. Luckily, I have found the wallet every single time where it has fallen out of my shorts. Mm-hmm. But that can happen. All right, switching gears here, Vito. Did you ever eat at Joe's Crab Shack? Haven't. I heard they're closing down, right? Suddenly, it's been a couple of years since I last went there. I think I celebrated an anniversary or a birthday dinner or something there maybe two years ago. But suddenly, all Joe's Crab Shack are gone. And I'm like, you know what? Um, me and my wife, we did something that was amazing. And I feel guilty. You tell me. I got to check in to make sure that I wasn't too excited about what I was doing. So finally, we let my daughter stay the night at their grandparents' house. So last Friday, my girls spent the night with their grandparents, and we were freaking out a little bit because we tried it with my oldest daughter when she was about three, four, to have her stay at her cousin's. She made it till about 11, and then she kind of freaked out, so I had to go back and pick her up. So this time around, she started to ask with her sister, can we spend the night at grandma's? So I'm like, you know what? Let's try it. Maybe me and the wife can go on a date night, and we can have a good old time. So we took the kids, dropped them off to the in-laws, and they did great. You know, we were checking in on them every couple hours to make sure, but we took their sleeping bags, they hung out with their grandparents, and they had a good old time. So you know what, we, so you know what me and my wife did? We went over to Harbor House and crushed the all-you-can-eat crab legs, <laughs> and I was like, oh, the hot crab legs are so good. You went with to the, heaven, baby, didn't you? I ate, like, literally. No, I didn't do much of anything else. I didn't do the shrimp or the London broil. I didn't do anything else. I just went there and crushed, like, four legs full of crab. And I was just, about to say, is that in the diet? Oh, <laughs> I, I um, you know, to reveal a little bit, I had a physical test. Uh, I had my yearly physical scheduled for August seventh. I canceled it for September fourteenth. So I'm uh, now. See why. I'm in training for one month, but I crushed that crab. And I hear basically without the butter, crab's not all that bad for you. Maybe a little bit of cholesterol or whatever, but it was so good. And the Harbor House, you know, unpaid plug here. I love it. My wife's family has a tie to the owner. So from time to time, maybe two or three times a year, that was my spot. But if you want to rank crab places around town, number one is the casino. Motor City Casino, I think on Mondays, you can go get laser crab. But the casino is very expensive if you want to go get crab. It's damn near $30, $40. But so good. I mean, you literally could eat till you can't wear your pants anymore. But for me, that's where I would rank the crab. But, uh, you know, back in the day, Windsor Casino used to have a seafood night. And uh, from time to time, I always kind of look to see what places have good crab. Joe's was okay, but it was a little bit on the pricey side versus what you could get. From time to time, I, I have always wanted to. I've never done it. I'm curious if you or your family has ever done it. When you go into Costco, you go by the back and you go by where there's a bunch of great frozen foods and stuff like that. And you walk back and you see the huge king crab legs. I always wanted to cook it myself, but a couple times we've tried lobster and it hasn't turned out too good, but we overdid it and it, made, and it came out all rubbery and stuff like that. So crab is something I really love. So to hear that there's one less place you can go to get crab really sucks. Are there crab places that you know of that are highly recommended? I don't get into crab too much. You're not a crab um, guy? Crab you're not a seafood leg, guy? seafood guy. Oh. My dad is, though. He's been to Joe's Crab Shack. Is that what it's called, Joe's? Yep. Now, he's been there. He's gotten six. I don't think he will feel too bad about it closing down. <laughs> you, I'll say that much. Remember what happened? No, I wasn't there with them, but I heard it from my mom the other day. She was telling me that my dad got sick a few years ago when he went to Joe's the last time and got some crab or whatever it was, seafood over there at Joe's Crab Shack. So I don't think he's feeling too bad about it closing down. So you're not a seafood guy. You're not an iPhone guy. What am I that I can correlate with you about or through? I, I, mean, I think like, we're not we best we, friends anymore. No, we can't hit <laughs> on anything. No, it's all good. I can understand. But let me just tell you, Vito, seafood is really good, man. I'm a, I'm a salmon guy. All the restaurants around town make pretty good salmon. Crab legs. I just need, uh, I just need a couple other places to go. But, hell, I'm an all-you-can-eat guy. So if you can top Harbor House and all-you-can-eat crab and, and cheaper than the casino, i got to find a place. But it's hard because... <laughs> What I hear is the prices keep going up for crab because of the fact that the prices for these restaurants to purchase it keeps going up. So you can't – crab is like a delicatessen. I was about to say, that is a delicacy now? I mean, it seems like that. No doubt about it. So um, – and, and and people chide me. People rip on me because of the fact that I go to these great steakhouses and I prefer salmon and seafood because I'm not really a steak guy. And it's not that I don't like a good quality steak, but for me it's like once every four months or so. There are some guys that every time they go to a restaurant, it's like a huge filet and mashed potatoes. For me, I'm more of a guy that likes seafood and likes salmon. I like broiled salmon. I like blackened salmon. So I'm a salmon connoisseur, per se, and I think it's better for you. 
It is healthier. It's a healthier choice. I think your dietician or your doctor would tell you that too when you uh, go to your appointment next month. Where's one place where if you had 100 bucks and you could go anywhere to chow down on, where would you go out to eat? I like Five Guys and Fries. I like Vito. burger establishments. I'm trying to think of bigger places that I go to. I don't just go or frequent I, I definitely dinner have establishments have or big time restaurants. See, this is the problem. You can't take your date that we're trying to get well, you well, to, to Five okay, Guys. Well, you're saying a, you're asking me where I would take somebody for a date pretty much? Sure. Like a nicer establishment, right? Yeah. I would have to think about it. because McDonald's. <laughs> no, I would never. Tim Hortons. Tim Big Hortons. B Coffee. I got yeah. some gift cards for my charity self. I'll Let's go Big to B. my fine established Panera Bread. Oh, I love Panera <laughs> Bread. I love the paninis, the soup, the salad. Oh, baby. The take two or something, I think it is, on the menu. <laughs> Where oh, would yeah, you, you save go, some Bino? money. Where would you go nice? I mean, give me some nice ideas. I don't know. I would have to really, like, brainstorm. Cause I don't know because I don't go to, like, fine establishments that often. Still probably, young. Probably an Italian place. Luciano's, Andiamo's, a place like that where you could get a steak, an Italian dish perhaps as well. Well, obviously, the Italian dish is, I mean, something that really? I would want from one of those places. Oh, my gosh. This gives, me, this gives me such motivation now to keep busting ass here for the podcast. Have you ever been to Morton's? Have you been to Ruth Morton's Chris? Steakhouse? Not, I have been to Morton's, not the other place. Now that there's one in Ann Arbor, right? That's where Jim Harbaugh made that. Remember, he went, he got the milk right as his beverage or something. So, what was the thing they did too? Do you remember it? Yeah, the bet they did with U of M football. Or they something had about- to cap it for fifty percent off by I think the number of. Um, they did a promotion where how many was it points scored last football season? I think they did a promotion where the margin of victory between Michigan football and Rutgers on the road, I believe, the margin of victory was way over 50, so they yep. capped it at 50%. So people, <laughs> I don't recall, but if you got there early, you got like 50% off of your bill for a certain time if you made a reservation, but it got booked up so fast that you, a lot of people couldn't take advantage of it. Recently, they did one where anybody named Chris could get a free steak. Really? Yeah, so they do a... So that place does quite a bit of stuff, and they got good food there, but I got to work... I got to make this podcast work a little extra harder so that I can take you out to some of these finer places around here um, in Troy. There's a lot of great restaurants in Troy, great steakhouses, great places like that. So, okay, very interesting. So I'm not going to go to you for food recommendations. No, I'm not the guy for that. But sad day for fans of Joe's Crab Shack. Distinguished. They're gone. And the restaurant business is so hard, man. I don't understand why. Company-wide, too. There must be some serious problems because there were several of them. To have all of them closed throughout the state of Michigan, um, we just saw it here come across the wire, so we'll check on to see what happened later on, get more details regarding it. So, all right, before we get out of here, one last thing we got to talk about. Man, it's been a crazy week politically, right? With these white supremacists, neo-Nazis protesting in Virginia, the counter-protests, the angst in which the country has been feeling over social media regarding the president's comments. Everybody's offended. Everybody's all up in arms. Well, to tie it locally, I was shocked to see some of these logos on some of these white supremacist groups, and I was like, wow. And the, the Red Wings came out strongly, and they were just like, no, we condemn all these supremacists and these neo-Nazis using our logos. We're going to try to take any and all legal avenues to try and stop this. So then some people in Detroit are kind of chiding the Red Wings a little bit and coming back saying, oh, are you really against white supremacy when you're going to open your building with Kid Rock? And I found that a little bit extreme coming from Sam Riddle and his camp just because of the fact that, yes, Kid Rock in the past did use and represent the Confederate flag. But once he got some pushback, once he realized the impact of using the Confederate flag and what it means and represents to a large group of people, he took it down right away. He hasn't used it. He hasn't used the Confederate flag in several years. So to come back now and to chide Kid Rock, I have no problem with Kid Rock opening Little Caesars Arena. It's just strictly business, baby. That guy sold out six concerts already, and he's going to make everybody money. So if he was a racist, if he was somebody that was an abhorrent individual, of course you take a look at it. But Kid Rock is more than worthy of opening up Little Caesars Arena. It's a non-issue, and I can't believe that Sam Riddle and his group would use that platform to say that, especially when, when Kid Rock's obviously made some changes. Well, he has with the flag, not what, bearing the flag anymore. And you know what? He's not, he, there's no proof that he's a racist. Like you said, I, I would say if he had been proven to this point, you know, at this point in time to be a racist, to have these big prejudices that he expresses to the masses that he tweets about, that he talks about at his concerts, and if he was blatant, you know, overtly racist, well, okay, I don't want him opening up my new arena. 
the thing is, he's going to sell out. He's going to make a ton of money for uh, Little Caesars Arena. He's pretty much a resident, right? They're going to make him one, or you know, he's pretty much being labeled as that by opening up Little Caesars Arena with all those shows that he's doing. And for me, I think maybe a little bit overblown, but then I think about why did you in the first place always have to bring around the Confederate flag? I have never understood that, why that's even still a thing. Deep down south, why they still have remnants of it, you know, the political propaganda, memorabilia, commemorating the Confederate flag and Confederacy during that time way back in the day when America first formed. So I don't understand why that has been a thing, why it still does exist down south. But in this certain instance, I think it's a thing where maybe it was overblown. And especially if it is true, and I believe it is true, that he has stopped burying that Confederate flag in recent memory. Vito, right now, we live in a very interesting age of time where every word that people say is being critiqued, is being referenced, is being saved. And, you know, it's really tough nowadays because I really think that freedom of speech is being attacked because... A lot of people object to a lot of things people say, and that's why I kind of love doing this podcast is we just let it rip and see what happens. But right now in this day and age, if you're a public figure, I don't know the value of talking to the media. I don't know any value you get out of trying to say things that may be construed as negative. I mean, you almost have to be politically correct nowadays where you got to get training to learn what to say and what not to say, but it's getting really tough because people are getting offended quite a bit about a lot of different things. And so if you're a guy in the public figure, you definitely got to get some public, you definitely have to get some PR training and realize what you can and cannot say. As much as some people are really getting upset and pushing back on the whole notion of being too politically incorrect, this day and age, when you see reactions to the president and what he's saying and what he's not condemning and things like that in a timely manner in which he's condemning things, I go back to smart things people say to hear Whitehead even referenced this notion in so many words, which is wise people also listen, which means, look, if you oppose somebody, don't do or say things to close down the dialogue. Try your best to figure out if you're talking to somebody that you don't agree with or you're talking to somebody that would offend you, instead of being offended, be intrigued, be curious. And that's what I do is that I try not to get too offended by things, but if somebody comes across as racist or comes across as Uh, ignorant. I try to listen more. I try to engage them in dialogue to understand where did this come from? Where do you get this notion of feeling like people are like this or like that? And I try to understand people. And I feel like that's done me such a world of good in terms of removing judgments. I don't judge people. And being a psychologist, it's the easiest platform because I can never judge any of my clients in order for any of the work to be successful. So what I try to do outside of you and your phone and your antics, I try not to judge people. So you're the only person across from me that I judge. Oh, good to hear. That must be be you're important. (laughs) Yeah, what a compliment to me, right? But what I try to do with others is I try to understand. That's why I ask you all those questions, like, tell me about your Samsung. Why would you have it? But I do think you're ridiculous for having a Samsung when you could have an iPhone. But I think it would help people where instead of being offended and angry, to be curious and intrigued as to what the hell is a neo-Nazi thinking? Where did you come across the idea that white supremacy is the way to go or that you think that's the way to portray yourself? I would be intrigued. I would be intrigued and curious to sit across from some of these people and figure out where the hell did you come up with this notion and where do you think this is going to go? Engage them in dialogue. And I think that's why I have you because I'm so concerned and worried about the dialogue that you speak that each and every week I try to draw and understand what crazy life you're living as opposed to the happy life I'm living. Oh, crazy life. Well, I mean, being a liberal snowflake, right? I've been called that. But you know what? I'm going to say regarding political activism, too, really quick. It is a, a kind of a fine line now, huh? Where if you cross it, you could lose your job. I mean, and you lose your credibility, your reputation with your family and friends, and you lose friends and family subsequently. And people that were protesting, these white supremacists and neo-Nazis that were protesting in Charlottesville, Virginia— Some of those white supremacists lost their jobs. But that's where I think, well, that's political activism gone wrong. That's just stupidity. That's not even political. It's not activism. It's stupidity. And when that happens, I think those people deserve to lose their jobs. And some people did because they were found to have been on the white supremacy side in those protests in Charlottesville, Virginia. Very fascinating times. We'll stay abreast as to what's been happening. 
and I look forward to recording continued podcasts with you, sir. That's why I enjoy doing it with you. Uh, you provide a different flair, and each and every week we get a chance to record is always a good time for me. It's always been fun, Doc. We'll keep rolling along as this has been episode number 32 of Two Bad Hombres on the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. I am Vito Turco signing off. And you can stream all Detroit Sports Podcast programming 24-7 on demand via our website, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. And if you subscribe to us via iTunes, rate, listen, give us a five-star review. It definitely helps out the project. Thank you very much. It's been, get it, get flat. I got six jobs. I don't care.